find a diamond by scratching on the surface. You'll never find a pearl if you wait out on the shore. That's the way it is when you're looking for the answers. Wisdom lies deep. Wisdom lies in the search Look a little deeper Go a little further Search a little harder Don't you know you've got to grow? You know you've got to grow You know you've got to grow Hi there, welcome to Probe. Let's look at the Christian way of life today. Are all Christians called to minister? How do I know what ministry I am called to do? Can Christians become social activists? Is it wrong to do tattoo and body piercing? Questions and more questions. Without wasting any more time, let's go straight into the discussion of Dr. Raj Kumar with Dr. Nirmala Abraham. We are truly delighted to have you with us once again, Brother Raj Kumar. My pleasure too. <laughs> Today we'd like to talk some more about the Christian way of life. Uh, Jesus came to save us and to give us abundant life. But Christian living mm. has got its own challenges. So how do we live the way Jesus wants us to? Before I talk about what is abundant life, let me talk about what is not necessarily abundant life. Yes. Uh, in Luke 12, 15, Jesus says, A man's life does not consist in the abundance of his possessions. Yes. Now, although God can make uh, some people rich and you know well-to-do, that's to say they're generous, but uh, that doesn't mean that is abundant life. Mm. Uh, abundant life is uh, abundance of peace, mm. joy, freedom from anxieties, freedom mm. from discouragement, uh, reigning over every problem in this world. Right. And uh, the fact is, when you live for Jesus, we will have difficulties. Mm. The Lord never said, you follow him, you won't have difficulties. Mm. In fact, he promised us difficulties. Mm. In John 16, 33, he says, I have told you these things, that in me you will have peace. Yes. In the world you will have troubles, mm. but take heart, I have overcome the world. So abundant life is uh, enjoying our relationship with God and uh, obeying Him. In that process, manifesting the peace of God, the mm -hmm. joy of the Lord, yes. and reigning over every problem in life. Mm. Now, in Romans 5.17, Paul says, If by the trespass of one man, mm. Adam, death reign through that one man. Mm. How much more will those who receive God's abundant provision of grace and the gift of righteousness yes. reign in life through one man, Christ Jesus? Yes. So apart from receiving the gift of righteousness, who is Christ, we are called to receive the abundant provision of grace. Mm. The more and more God uh, gives us grace to face every crisis in life. Mm. So we go through difficulties. We go through difficulties, we should look at it uh, as uh, tools in God's hands to build us up. Mm. And uh, the first thing we should ask ourselves whenever we face difficulties, am I responsible for it? Mm. Is something wrong I have done for which I am suffering? Yes. Which because you repent and confess and God right. restores everything? Or is it because of my obedience to the Lord? Mm. If it's because of our obedience to the Lord, we don't have to feel bad about mm. it. Because those troubles are creating for us glory in heaven. Yes. So uh, in uh, James 1, Verse 2, 3, 4, uh, James writes, Consider pure joy when you face trials of many kinds. Mm. For the testing of your faith, there is perseverance. Perseverance must finish its work in you. It will mature and complete, not lack anything. Yes. The Christian way of life is one of excellence as you are serving others as a servant. So tell us how we can be excellent as a servant of others. Yeah, see, it's a calling for all of us to serve God and because of which we serve people. Mm. Now when you serve people, what is the motivation? Is it out of love for God 
or is it love for yourself? Mm. Explain the difference. How do you serve other people out of love for yourself? How to get a name for yourself? Ah, oh, as a yeah. Very good, uh, excellent uh, person. I, I know I've done so much. Mm. Everyone says nice things about okay. me. We're so helpful. Yeah. So just because you give money to people, doesn't mean you love them. Mm. You some people give and help others mm. to get a name for themselves. That's to be true. considered as a uh, helpful person, loving person, holy person, mm. self love. Mm. You know. Now in the Bible there are many words for love. In the Greek there are many words for love, which unfortunately English only says love. Mm. And uh, one of them is love of self, which is filio auto. Mm. Griya is love of money. Mm. Filio auto is love of self. Mm. Philadelphia is love of the brethren. Mm. Filio is love as a friend. Uh, philanthropos, love of mankind. Mm. So there are different kinds of love. But the love that uh, we need to manifest, which is God's love, is agape. Yes. Selfless love. Mm. So, coming back to serving people, when we serve people out of love for God, mm. you will never lose zeal for service. Yes. When you do, when you help people out of love for yourself to get a name, they don't acknowledge that. Mm. They don't even thank you. You get upset. Yes, yes. How do we uh, serve people out of love for God? Mm. Remember the time when Peter was restored by Jesus to the fellowship of God. Mm. He had denied him three times. Then by yes. the Sea of Tiberias, uh, as Jesus goes fishing, mm. the Lord is on the shore mm. preparing breakfast for them. Yes. Peter comes to the shore. No, Lord asks him a question. John 21st chapter 15. Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Mm. And he says, you know I love you, Lord. Yes. Feed my lambs. Mm. You love me, feed my sheep. Mm. You love me, take care of my sheep. That means feeding God's people, mm. taking care of them, it should be an expression of love for God. Mm. If you love me, yes. you take care of my people. Mm. Also, in Hebrews 6.10, it mm. says, God is not unjust. Mm. He will not forget your work, mm. And the love you have shown him mm. as you helped his people yes. and continue to help them. The Lord Jesus Christ uh, healed 10 people of leprosy. And when they came to him, he told them, go show yourself to the priests. Mm. As they went, they got healed. Yes. They were not healed in his presence. Right. As they went, they got healed. Only one came and thanked him. He was not even a Jew. Mm. Remaining nine apart from not thanking, mm. they didn't even tell him they got healed. Mm, that's true. He was not, they were not healed when he was there yes. on the way. So the question is, did the Lord Jesus Christ stop the ministry of healing because 90% didn't thank him? <laughs> so when you do your love for God, you will never lose zeal for service. Yes. You will serve people selflessly, mm. knowing fully well every small thing we do mm. out of love for God, for people, mm. he takes note of. Mm. And he will, he's our reward. So in John 12, 26, Jesus says, Whoever serves me must follow me. Mm. Where I am, my servant will be. Mm. My father will honor the one who serves me. Yes. So, so many people, Christian leaders, they do ministry and they seek honor from people. Mm. Whereas you seek honor from God. Yes. Then you enjoy the ministry. You never lose zeal. Mm. You never go slow. You only increase your service. Mm. That's true. Supposing you go for a Christian meeting and they didn't give you a place to sit on the dais or front row, the next time you don't go yeah. because you are offended. Yeah. Now the thing is, the flip side is, supposing the person who is conducting the meeting invites you to the front row because you are a very important person, he is breaking all the commandments. Mm. All the commandments. Yes. You know, it says in the Bible, in James 2.10, whoever keeps the whole law but stumbles at one point is guilty of breaking all the laws. <laughs> now, that's the 10th verse. Mm. That's the first nine verses. What's the context of that uh, one stumbling point? A poor man comes in, says, stay, stay in the last row. Mm. Be there. Don't come near. Rich man comes in with fine clothes. Come, come sit in the front. Mm. By doing that, you stumble once. Mm. At one point. How many laws you have broken? Oh, all yeah. the laws. <laughs> so, some churches... Break all the commandments every Sunday morning <laughs> by giving importance to people. Yes. So it's important to understand that God looks at it very differently. Mm. And um, before God, we are all the same. Yes. Now the next question is, should we spend more time in praying and studying the Bible or in uh, evangelizing, I mean, witnessing and ministering? They both go together because um, uh, you spend time with God to hear from God, mm. to be instructed by God. Once he instructs you, you have to follow. Mm. Like I said in one of the early episodes, there are times to pray, there are times to act. Yes. When it's time to pray, we should not act. 
When it's time to act, we should not pray. Yes. There have been times in the Bible where God rebuked people for praying when they should be acting. Mm. <laughs> you know, at a time when Joshua went to war yes. against the enemies, they lost the war. Mm. And uh, Joshua came back, lying prostrate on the ground, or oh, half a day is lying prostrate, mm. and questioning God, very concerned about God's name. Mm. What are you going to do about your name, Lord? Mm. What will people say? Your people are going to lose the war. Yes. He's so concerned about God's name, as if mm. God can't defend himself. Mm. And the Lord rebukes Joshua. Yes. Joshua chapter 7, verse 10. And what are you doing on the ground? Go settle sin in the camp. Mm. So the time we have to act, time we have to pray. Mm. Are all Christians called to minister? And how do I know what ministry I am called to? Okay, the first question. Every Christian is a servant of God. Mm -hmm. There are different kinds of service. Yes. Uh, First Corinthians 12 chapter 5 says the different kinds of service but the same Lord. And uh, the uh, other day I spoke about a few weeks back about how God gave to the church apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers. Mm -hmm. For what purpose? To prepare God's people for works of service. Yes. So every child of God is a servant of God. In the book of Hebrews, chapter 9, 13, 14, we read, Mm. The blood of goats and bulls and the ashes of a heifer sprinkled on those who are ceremonially unclean, Mm. sanctify them that they are outwardly clean. Mm. What does it mean, sacrifice? Yes. Verse 14 says, How much more than will the blood of Christ, Mm. who through the eternal spirit offered himself unblemished to God, cleanse our consciences, from acts that lead to death, so that we may serve the living God. Right. Serve the living God. Yes. So to serve God, but of Christ has cleansed us. Mm. So once you understand that, you will want to know. Now again, the next question you asked was, how do you know what is, how we can serve mm. God? It's the same thing. The answer for that is the same answer to the question people put, how do you find the will of God? Yes, same. Now, who is a servant? Someone who does the will of his master. Yes. Isn't it? Mm. Very simple. Master, right. servant. Yes. No, the Lord is our master, we are his servants. When you do his will, we are his servant. So to find out the specific will of God and doing it is servant. Mm. The other day I told you about the general will and specific will. As we are busy doing the general will of God for all Christians, a life of holiness, 2 Timothy 1 9, he saved us and called us to a holy life. Mm. Calling for all of us to have fellowship with him, mm. 1 Corinthians 1 9, mm. for all of us to live by the word. Matthew right. 4, 4, mm. to live by the Spirit, Galatians 5, 16, mm. to live by faith, Romans 1, 17. Mm. They're all a general calling for everybody. Yes. They have fellowship with each other, you know, Hebrews 10, 25. So we do all these things, you are the gender will of God. While doing so, as you seek God for a specific will, calling, vocation, mm. He'll give you the peace about what He wants you to do. Yes. Now, there's a verse in the Bible, Colossians 3.15, Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. Mm. Since members of one body have been called to peace, mm. let's be thankful. Mm. Now, the word ruling, let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. Yes. The word rule is from a Greek word called brabio. Mm. Brabio means to decide. To decide. This word brabio was used in colloquial Greek mm-hmm. in the context of uh, a judge giving a verdict. Okay. The, we say, you know, the court ruled, mm. judge ruled, yes. as Brabio, yes. to decide. Or in a 100 meters race, a close finish, mm. the judges will decide, mm. Brabio, who mm. came first. Mm. So, when you are praying about two or three different alternatives, they all seem good, mm. only one is best. Yes. Choosing between good and bad is easy. Uh, choosing between good and good is normally difficult. Only one is best. Now, this piece, Brabio, which I spoke about, we will decide which is best. Yes. So that's why we need to consult the Holy Spirit, who is a counselor, mm. to put his peace in our hearts mm. about what is best for us. Yes. So that's why the Christian life is a life of living by the Spirit. Mm. And God will reveal his plans for us, mm. because uh, he loves to reveal his plans, mm. his purpose for our lives. And uh, so we must seek his will and do his will on a daily basis. The next question is about uh, mm. bribes. One person writes, some people justify bribes by saying, it's like you are giving alms to a poor person. Or just imagine that a bandit is holding you up for your money. What do you say? 
See, uh, taking a bribe is sin in the Bible. Yes. Old Testament says that. Yes. Cl no. Clearly and clearly categorically. Says, yeah, categorically. Don't take a bribe. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, some people argue, I am not taking a bribe, I am only giving a bribe. Mm. Now, even that the Bible says in the 18th chapter of Matthew, I think it was 7 onwards, he says, work to the world, mm. the things that cause people to sin. Yes. Okay. Such things must happen. But what is the person through which it happens? Yes. So, if I don't bribe a certain person, somebody will bribe. Mm. So, you can say, if I don't bribe, he will bribe. So, he is going to be taking bribes. Mm. But you know, it shouldn't be the person through whom he is yes, sinning. Yes. Now, no doubt, when you do not uh, give bribes, you go through some hardship. Don't pay the bribe, telephone is not connected. Mm. You know, you can't get things. But put up with it. Because after all, when you are doing the will of God, you have peace. Yes. Why lose the peace for the sake of temporary gain? Mm. Mm. And you can, you can see how God is faithful when you honor Him. Mm. It says in First Samuel chapter 2, verse uh, 30, those who honor God, He honors. Yes. When you honor God by living a holy life, He'll honor you by vindicating. Mm. So I think we should not. There's no limit. You make a small yes. allowance here, then it leads to other compromises. So we should have a clear-cut ideas that uh, if Bible says, "Don't take bribe, yeah. don't give bribe," yeah, yeah, yeah. then we cannot just justify it or try to prove that it is not wrong. Yeah, you see, you can yes. do that, but you are losing the peace of God. Yes. It's a choice we make. Mm. In uh, 2 Timothy 3.12 it says, If anyone chooses to live a godly life in Christ, mm. he will be persecuted. Yes. If it, it's a choice. You can choose mm. not to do. Mm. And you will not be persecuted. You will not uh, you get a mm. thing done. You have to pay the price. Yeah, but you lose the peace. No, mm. That's the price you pay. Mm. So, uh, it's a choice you make. Yes. Yeah. Is it okay for Christians to become social activists? for the cause of, say, women or minorities or for the environment or something yeah. like that. And nothing wrong with that. Uh, I believe that uh, we don't have to fight for our own rights. We can fight for other people's rights. Mm. You know? So, only thing, when you go, the way you go about it, you mm. shouldn't be, you should be in a godly way. Mm. Like, sometimes actors can be a little uh, violent also. Yes. Uh, so, we don't do, shouldn't do all that. In fact, uh, the principle of non-violence is from the Bible only. Mm. You know, even our uh, Mahatma Gandhi acknowledged the Bible, mm. Sermon on the Mount. Yes. But Jesus said, someone said, the right cheek, show him the other cheek. Mm. That's why this non-violence mm. concept came, idea came. Mm. So that's the uh, Christian way. Mm. So you can uh, take up causes mm. uh, against uh, injustice, but do it in a godly way. And uh, you can take up other people's cases. Yes. Don't fight, fight for your own case. Right. But simply because uh, God I will vindicate you. Mm. You know, and Psalm 135 verse 14 says, God will vindicate his people. And if the authorities fail to execute justice, yeah. say something happens and you find that the authorities have been unfair or something like that. Yeah. Then can we take matters into our own hands? Why or why not? No, why, why should we take it into our own hands? God is a, uh, is a, is a vindicator, no? Mm. He's not a silent spectator. Yes. See, sometimes we tend to uh, play God and uh, he'll test us to see whether we trust him till the very end. Mm. Ultimately, he'll vindicate us. Yes. Jesus could have vindicated himself mm. so many times. Yes. When he when they arrested him, he could have asked our fathers and angels. Mm. The lynch would have come and yes. rescued him. But how the will of God take place? So yes. you should, at that point, you must ask yourself, what is God's will for me now? Mm. Uh, when Paul wrote to the Christians in Rome and told them to be subject to authority, who is the authority there? Mm. Nero. Rome. Yes, Nero. Nero. And 13 chapter of Romans, he talks about being subject to authority. Mm. There's no authority except that instituted by God. Mm. That's why, very interestingly, I never advise God on who should be elected as representative. Mm. I don't pray for elections. Mm -hmm. In a way. God knows. He instituted himself, who he wants to put, he'll put. Mm. He put Nero in charge of Rome. Mm. Who might advise God whom he should put as uh, elected representative? Mm. You know, during those days when England and France used to have wars, the English pastors pray for the English soldiers to kill the French soldiers. Mm. <laughs> the French pastors pray, uh, pray for the French soldiers to kill the British soldiers. Mm. Or take a football match, simple thing, a football match, Brazil versus Argentina. Mm. Now the uh, chapter of the Brazilian team will pray for Brazil to win. Chapter of the Argentine team will pray for Argentina to win. Who, what will God do? <laughs> God can't be partial. Yeah. So this is not important. Mm. So uh, they got authority, God institutes authority. Mm. So I don't advise God whom we should come as, mm. uh, which party should get elected, who should become president, prime minister. I never do that. Christians are upset with me. Oh, I'm not praying for elections. I am mm. praying and I know God will put this person. Whoever comes, I'll pray for that person. Mm. So today, if we Christians uh, follow the law of the land, 
and pay our taxes, mm. get our accounts audited and submit to government, why should we fear authority? Mm. So I think it's important to understand that uh, God is sovereign and he expects us to submit to authority and don't take ju justice in your own hands. Mm. Pray for people who have authority. Yes. Now another person wants to know if it is okay to listen to rock music and hard metal. See, it, it is not beneficial for you, for Christian growth, so mm. don't do it. Like this same question came earlier also in some other context. Uh, First Corinthians 6.12 Everything is permissible, not everything is beneficial. Yes. Everything is permissible, but I will not be mastered by anything. Mm. Now, when you talk heavy metal and rock, actually if you go deeper into it, the source of that is not from God. Mm. I don't want to go deeper into all that, I don't have enough time. Mm. But you know it doesn't build you up in the faith. Mm. And it says in Jude 20, build yourself in the most holy faith. Mm. It doesn't build you up. There are undercurrents of lyrics in yes. such music. In heavy metal. And in heavy metal and rock. And uh, if you go to the actual lyrics of some of the songs, I, I grew up with those songs those days, no? Mm -hmm. Not uh, heavy metal, but rock music, pop mm -hmm. music those days. Some of the songs are, the lyrics are uh, glorifying some other source, mm -hmm. some other uh, entity. Mm -hmm. So we stay away from that. So mm -hmm. it's not, I know it's not beneficial for Christian growth, yes. so no need for all that. Mm -hmm. And what about tattooing and body piercing? Uh, in the Old Testament, Leviticus 18, mm -hmm. it talks about not to tattoo yourself, you know? Mm. But then look at the context. The context actually, mm. those days the nations, the land of Canaan, mm. seven nations, mm. they were uh, putting tattoos mm. of their objects of worship. Okay. They were those are tattoos referred to. Mm. So you are a child of the living God. Why do you want to have tattoos of a pagan God? Yes. So that's the context. Mm. So, tattoo by itself is not wrong. The context mm. of Leviticus 18 yes. is... What are you tattooing? What are you tattooing? Are you, tattooing? Mm. you can put John 3.16 on your, mm. on, on your mm. arm. <laughs> but having said that, mm. I asked, put a simple question. What's the need for all that? Yes. Piercing. God it, has given you a good skin. Why do you want to spoil yeah, it? Not only that, even your, as you are, you are, you're made by God as you mm. are. Be happy with that. Yes. If you want to tattoo yourself, ask yourself. You're now very young, 18, 20, you put mm. tattoos. Mm. Imagine when you're 75 years old, mm. your grandson comes and asks you, Granddaddy, what's there in your shoulder that I explained that? It's embarrassing, no? Yes. No? <laughs> and you can't remove it. You can't remove it. That's what I'm saying. In the world also is there. No yes. need. Mm. I would say it's not necessary. Mm. Your beauty should come from your inner self. Yes. You know? And when you look for a lot, you'll be uh, radiant. Yes. Psalm 34 verse 5. Those who look to him are radiant. radiant. So radiance should come from your walk with God. Mm. So you don't need all these things. Body piercing. The next question is, is dating before marriage a good thing? See, dating, uh, uh, as long as you have know, limits, there's nothing wrong with having a friend. Mm. I would put it like this. You can have an opposite sex, if you're a boy, you can have a girl as a friend, but don't have a girlfriend. Mm -hmm. You can have a girl as a friend, mm -hmm. don't have a girlfriend. Meaning, it should not be beyond a certain limit. Mm. And uh, when you look at God's perspective of uh, man-woman relationship, is one man for one woman. Mm. So as long as a person you are dating, and that you must draw a line, mm. not go beyond the limits, mm. as long as the person is the one you are going to marry, mm. you can date till yes. marriage, but yes. no physical relationship, yes. till such time you get married. Mm. If you are not sure, don't. Mm. There is a time for everything, no? The Bible says. Mm. Time to get settled in life, yes. time to study, time to pursue a career. Right. So after you get a job, and you have a career, then is the time to think of marriage. Mm. So, the fine line between dating and having a friend. Mm. So, best is don't jump the gun, you know, and don't uh, rush into anything. Yes. But if you are sure you are going to marry that person, mm. you can be friends mm. and uh, of course be emotional also. Mm. But as long as you don't cross the barrier, yes. God has said, then there is nothing wrong with that. Right. The next question is about going to doctors. Some people, some Christians, they don't believe in going to doctors or taking medicines. What do you say about that? Okay, you don't go to doctors, then Luke would have been jobless. <laughs> Luke was a physician. Yes. You know? Now, I'll explain uh, why some Christians don't mm. want to go to doctors. Mm. They decide how God should heal them. Yes. God can use doctors. Right. So, don't depend upon doctors, mm. depend upon God. God mm. uses doctors. Now, doctors what can treat and uh, God heals. God only heals always. Mm. Doctors treat. Now, med what are medicines actually? Before I talk about medicine, let me talk about food. What is food? Chemicals. Mm -hmm. Body is chemical. 70% is water, remaining 30% is uh, chemicals. Mm. So when you are busy with activities, yes. you get tired. When you sweat, you lose salt and water. You drink water, you take salt mm. to replenish. Mm. 
the body is tired you feel hungry you eat food which is chemicals mm. so food is a basically chemicals to replenish the loss of chemicals in your body right isn't it mm. what is medicine specialized chemicals to deal with specialized deficiency in your body mm. take for example mental disease yes uh, a sort of lack of some chemicals in the brain hormone readjustment mm. some chemicals are lacking you take specific medicines specific chemicals mm. to replace those chemicals yes. lacking in the brain that's yeah. all yeah. so when people tell me i will not take medicine mm. i don't need to put on god i tell them don't eat food then mm. why do you want to eat food mm. <laughs> depend on god yeah depend on god so actually not taking medicine many times is the expression of spiritual pride because the bible says only the sick need doctors yeah, that yeah. means sick do need doctors. do need doctors and the last question is why do we have so many denominations why can't we all join together to worship our god if we should join together god's will is we should join together mm. but man's will is different yes <laughs> so jesus in 17th chapter of john verse 21 verse 23 he pray for unity in the body of christ mm. and uh, the church is divided only because of basically ego yes money also mm. jealousy quarreling so it's man's problem it's not god's right. problem god wants his church to be united church meaning mm. those called out to follow mm. him when you all follow him will all be united no mm. we're all not following him that's why because people want their own selfish will to be enforced and if it's not done then yeah. they start a new church yeah it's basically ego it's uh, unfortunate that uh, church is divided But that's not the will of God. Church mm. should be one, you know. Yes. But the reality is different. Because in heaven, when we go, there will be no denominations, right? Yeah, absolutely. It is just Christian. Only those washed yes. by the blood of Christ. Mm, that's be it. There. Yeah. Yes. We'll be different there. We won't fight there. We only <laughs> here fighting. Finish all the fighting here. Yes. <laughs> But how nice it'll be if we all like-minded. Yes. That's God's plan for the church. Thank you very, very Most much. Most welcome. Thank you from the bottom of our hearts <laughs> for coming here and for being with us. Thank welcome. you. The Christian way of life is not easy. But it is exciting and challenging. If you want to know more, please write to us at writetoprobe@gmail.com. I must bid farewell to you now. Till next week, goodbye and God bless. pro choice and mother's right a wife's submission to the husband should be a result of husband loving the wife like Christ has god chosen men over women do you think that they should get the same salary as men well known prayer or notorious prayer of mm. jew i thank god i am not a gentile mm. i thank god i am not a leper mm. i thank god i am not a woman why do you think jesus never had a single woman as one of the 12 disciples one day as women's day that is me 364 days of men's day i am a full time christian what role can a woman play in the church